Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to talk about bad pelvic fractures. This relates to the February 2017 EMRAP segment. So first, a little bit of anatomy. Very simple. You've got your sacrum in the back. That articulates with the ilium at the sacroiliac joint. Up the front, you have the superior and inferior pubic rami and the pubic synthesis. There's this thing called the pelvic ring. Now, there's lots of different pelvic rings, right? But when people are talking about the pelvic ring, they're talking about this ring that's formed posteriorly by the sacrum, by the ilium, and then anteriorly by the superior uh, pubic rami. Okay, that is the ring that most people are talking about. Here's an x-ray. So here's your sacroiliac joint. Here's your sacrum back here. Here's that pelvic ring. Here's your pubic synthesis. This should be less than 5 or 0 0.5 centimeters in most people. In pregnancy, it can go up higher to around 0 0.9 centimeters. Um, so that's your normal. Let's go on. Here's your open book pelvic fracture. This is a very bad injury. So you can see how wide this pubic synthesis is. You can see that you've also you know, opened up the posterior elements of the sacroiliac joint. Lots of vessels come in here. Lots of bleeding can occur here. Lots of bleeding here. So you can potentially bleed a lot from an open book pelvic fracture. Putting on a pelvic binder in a separate video we've got means that you can reduce this volume and probably reduce the amount of bleeding. Here's an x-ray of it. Again, look at this pubic synthesis. In uh, no man's land is this uh, okay. Less than 0 0.5 about centimeters is normal in the non-pregnant patient. You can't really see the posterior elements very well on many x-rays. CT scanning is better, but that's a classic open book pelvic fracture. Vertical shear tends to occur, say, when you jump off a tall building, and you can see the forces are sort of transmitted right through the pelvis like this. So often through the pelvic ring, and with fractures in the uh, pubic rami, or sometimes it comes through the uh, pubic synthesis here. Here's an x-ray of that, so you can see the fracture through here. And then this one's actually gone through the pubic synthesis. Vertical shear, and these can be sheared way up here. So here's the top of your ilium. It can be way up higher. It can be really sheared off. Very, very potentially serious and bleeding a lot injury. Lateral compression, so your forces are coming in from the side like you're hit by a car, and this iliac wing is sort of turned in, right? Here's an example. It's not a great example because there's elements of vertical shear, but there's also lateral compression, and uh, here it's sort of sheared a bit here. So you don't really find often perfect examples of these things. Um, does a pelvic binder work on this one? Got to be careful because maybe you can make this lateral compression worse. Does a pelvic binder work on... Vertical shear, well, it might, but you've got to be careful that you don't sort of squish it in this way. Pelvic binding probably works best for the um, open book pelvic fracture, but you can try it if you think it does more than just sort of reduce pelvic volume. You can also sort of stabilize the fractures a little bit. So there you have it, a very quick and dirty sort of overview of some pelvic fractures, again, relating to the February EMRAP segment. My name's Mel Herbert, and uh, we'll talk to you more soon.